PAX update is brought to you by Netflix. All right, three of us have regrouped yet one more time to pick the games that made us the happiest here at PAX. Tara, I'm going to start with you. What are your, what, what are your three? Uh, my number one is, well, these are in no particular order, by the way. Uh, the, one of the first games we saw, which was Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, I said this, I think, on the day one wrap-up, but Dragon Age series has never quite appealed to me the way that it has to some. But or a lot of people, actually. Yeah, well, I mean, Inquisition looks like a completely different game from the series, and I think that's what really appeals to it about me. I'm so excited for that to come out. Of course, it's a long way off. Uh, also, Metrico. Wasn't expecting a Vita title to be in my top three, but there it is. Uh, one of the most interesting puzzle games I've ever played. Um, it's also very mathy, which is why I like it. Uh, it's hard to explain. I, I think I talked about it a little bit in our uh, PlayStation wrap-up, which you guys might be seeing soon. Um, but yeah, absolutely fantastic. A really small development company. Uh, the guy who made it actually works in the same building as uh, Vlambeer and the guys who made Awesome Knots. So it's like a little indie, you know, like compendium or something. It's just weird how these buildings just seem to be attracting the people of like minds. That's, uh, that I is know, odd. I know. And uh, the third one is a game that I saw yesterday, Wolf Among Us, the new Telltale game. Um, which, you know, I love The Walking Dead. Uh, I think this is probably a little more my style, and it's, I'm not going to say a happier game than The Walking Dead, but it seems a little less depressing. It's less despairing. <laughs> I, I, think, I think that's the best way of putting it. And it is based on the uh, Fables yes. comic book, the very, very popular yeah. comic book. And it, I mean, it has, like, an inherently interesting story to go with it, but, I mean, what they're doing with the game just looks... Fantastic, and actually, I'm really excited because when I reviewed The Walking Dead, I did that after all the chapters had come out, and now I actually get to experience this one like chapter by chapter, and I think it's going to give me sort of a different experience. And also, by not being The Walking Dead, when you play it all at once, you just tend to want to throw yourself out a window. Exactly. So, <laughs> Max, what did you pick? Jeepers, Adam. Uh, let's see. For starters, um, I want to say the Oculus Rift. A lot of people have talked about this already. We've, we don't shut up about this. I saw this last year at PAX. However, this was my first time with the new 1080p Oculus Rift version, which um, the elephant in the room about, about the Rift is that when you wear it, with the, the dev kit at least, uh, you kind of get dizzy. There's, a, there's kind of a roller coaster theme park ride feel to it, which for some people is downright vomit-inducing. Uh, I didn't have that problem. Uh, I especially didn't have that problem with uh, with with the new one. I mean, I, the fact that I can I can play Hawken and just jump around and use jump jets and do flips and fly around in the air and just be a, a dumb, stupid robot, wearing this thing on day two of PAX when I'm hungover, tired, and by all rights should be wanting to vomit already, and then I take the thing off and I'm just no problem. And they're not done with it yet. And I think the Oculus Rift is only going to go up from here. You know, we're, we're seeing more and more stuff. They got John Carmack on board. So that's, that's very exciting and very promising. Uh, second pick is actually a game. So that's good. Um, uh, it's called Scale. It is, it is, the best way I can describe it is it's Portal, but with, with uh, making things larger and smaller. You have a, you have a gun. It's a first-person kind of puzzle platformer. Uh, you, you make objects in your environment shrink and, and grow and you'd solve puzzles using that. And it's kind of got a, it's got a more uh, Super Mario World vibe to it. There's a, there's a hub and you're collecting these little, little uh, particle things and then you kind of unlock new areas by doing that. Uh, you can make a butterfly get really huge and then hop on it and then ride it. I feel like that's a pretty cool thing to have in a game. You can, the, the thing that really just made me just, my brain flip inside out was taking a, a, a chest and picking it up and being, I'm like, where, where do I find the key? I've been playing games for my whole life. Like, I obviously I need a key. No, I just made the chest really big while standing above it, and then it fell through the keyhole. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the puzzles are very creative. Also, it's worth noting that that technology, that scaling thing, it's not used in a lot of other games. You know why? It's really hard to implement in a game. Yeah, it's, it's an impressive thing, and I'm excited to see that moving forward. Finally, my, my big pick was Tearaway. Holy hell, that is an adorable game. That is really endearing. It is, it's, it's cute, and it's lovable in a way that I don't think we see often enough. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like um, saccharin or, or. It's not cloying. It's not. I mean, it is. It's. It's an English team, and they don't go for the same level of kind of syrupy yeah. sweetness. It has a slightly different different flavor than a little Big Planet, and I'm very happy with it. It feels so much like a picture book, and it's just like there's there's just something so innocent about it, and it's it's a nice it's a nice change of face where all the things where you shoot the gun at the guy's face and the guts fly everywhere. So you know, hey, he's a little little paper man to go around and deliver letters. It's in your finger. I, just, I really like that game, too. So my three, um, so there's Super Time Force, if 
from Cappy Games. So uh, it is. It is. It, it really. Yes, it is reminiscent of, of Contra and stuff like that. It's got this one conceit where you're, you know, if you die, you can back up, and then you have replications of yourself. That's how you're supposed to get through the level. Um, at first, I was worried that that was going to become kind of arduous, and then it just became very novel. And it's just got, it's got that speed, it's got that flavor, and it just has that. I want to have cause and effect. I'm hitting a button, something's happening. It, yeah, it, it was absolutely just pleasurable for me. Um, another game, and apparently you know these guys, um, but I, I found this out through through other means. Um, Jazz Punk. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a team out of Toronto. Uh, they just got the deal with Adult Swim. Um, it was just one of those moments of whatever your imagination is, I would like to be lost in it because this is just endlessly entertaining and inventive. And, and just I was having so much fun just looking at it and having it not make any sense that I, I really am looking forward to just sitting down when this game is done and just going into a movie theater, because there's a way we go into a movie theater and you smoke a cigar, and it's running an ad on the movie screen from some 1960s toy ad. And let me just say, this was a horrible looking toy. And then you can like put the cigarette, the cigar butt out on people's heads. I don't even know if you're supposed to do that. I don't even know what you're supposed to do in this game, but it's just so completely awesome. You're supposed to infiltrate the, the, the uh, Soviet embassy, and I don't yeah. know why. I, uh, I, I would have picked that, but uh, Luis is a really good friend of mine, and I, I've been following this for, for quite some time, so I would feel somewhat kind of uh, yeah, and I, nepotistic but, to but, mention it. But, but, but I can say, I went in there sight unseen, not knowing what I was getting into, and was just like, yeah. Because no one listens to me. I've been telling you guys to check it out for ages. It's really cool. You just keep on hearing something in my ear over there. Uh, my final one uh, was That Dragon Cancer. This is, you know, there's been a lot of talk about this game. And, you know, it's very hard to even say that it's a game. But it is, you know, kind of like with Gone Home. It's one of those moments where you start to see the essential benefits of interactive storytelling. And it is about a guy. It was just one scene that I saw from it dealing with what he is going through right now, which is his his son who has terminal cancer and it was very rough I mean this is this is strong stuff but you really got a sense that there is something that probably therapeutic for him and absolutely fascinating for me as a player because it's not a place where I necessarily wanted to be but once I was there I had to kind of deal with it and got you know a, a remarkable understanding of, of something that I hope I never have to endure in my life and I can only you know imagine that they are going through quite a lot so I think just for the sheer courage of what is being demonstrated in that game, I, I, I have to give it note. Um, and then also the three of us picked a, uh, a, a game that we all liked. And I'm going to go ahead and let you say what it was because you've already mentioned it. It's, it's Tearaway. Yeah, it's Tearaway. It's just, tear away. Tear, yeah, that's why we did yeah. it because we're that, we're, we're just apathetic. Um, so it is, yeah, I'm with you. It's just joyous. Yeah, they're uh, they're using the PlayStation Vita's little touchy things and the weird the front facing camera, in a way that's not a, a annoying or, or or pandering or or tacked on. It's like they're just kind of, how would you make a cool fun toy with this? Yeah. You know? it is, it, and the colors and the look. Can I just say that I've been so incredibly and surprisingly impressed with the Vita showings that they've had at PAX this year. I mean. Tearaway, Hohokum, which I also loved and which was probably a runner-up for one of my top three picks. Metrico, like there's so much awesome stuff coming out for this system and I, I really want that kind of stuff on there because it's a great system, you know? They just don't have enough great games for it and pretty soon I think we're going to start seeing more stuff like that. Yeah, and that's exactly the kind of game I do want to play on a handheld. Um, also, we do have a runner-up for our kind of collective choice here. Yes, this is a game that only Zach and I uh, played, but we went to the Fan Gamer Across the Track Mode party the other night, and they had this new game, Synchroma, which is from the Capybari guys. Uh, this was something that they made in five days in a game jam, and if you were to look at it without having somebody explain it to you, you would be like, what the hell is going on? It's very simplistic looking. Uh, it's pretty much all white with like some red spikes and a cube, and the game is built on basically muscle memory. It's a random uh, set of three buttons that you have to remember in order to jump, duck, and uh, build platforms. And it makes you think in a way that you are not really used to thinking at all. And it's incredibly fun to play with other people as long as they know what's happening. I, I, I'm thoroughly intrigued by this game and I'm looking forward to getting my hands on it. I think I'll probably get very angry at it and swear a lot. So I, I don't, yeah, you have yeah, But that's entertaining for me and Tara. It's a, it's a perfect live stream game. We're going to have to do a drink and death yeah, for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. Now, of course, this means Patch is done for us. That is not to say Patch is done for you because we have a ton more videos that are already up and a lot more than be coming. So keep on coming back every day to see more coverage of some of the most interesting creative games that are going to be around for this year and the years to come. 
We're having a blast running around at PAX right now, but when it's over, there's a very good chance we're all gonna go home and veg out with Netflix. As I'm sure you guys are aware, Netflix offers unlimited streaming movies and TV episodes directly to just about anything with a screen and an internet connection, whether it's a Mac, PC, tablet, smartphone, 360, PS3, Wii U, Vita, so on and so forth. If you're in the need for some post-convention recovery entertainment, why not check out Netflix for yourself? Just head to netflix.com slash rev3games and sign up for a free two-week trial today. Every sign-up helps support our show, so just go to netflix.com slash rev3games.